Good afternoon. My name is Cameron Reardon, and I'm the Distributed Training Platform Coordinator for Physiotherapy at Stellenbosch University. I coordinate clinical training at some of our rural sites in the Western Province and Northern Province. It's my privilege to be with you all today, albeit virtually, at what surprisingly is my first rural health conference. Today, we'll share a little bit of the work that we've been doing over the last two years concerning clinical training in rural communities. The work that I'll be presenting today, by its nature, has been truly collaborative, and so it seems only fitting that we begin this presentation by acknowledging the immense contribution of the team members pictured in this slide. More specifically, I want to acknowledge the contribution of uh, my colleagues within the Division of Physiotherapy, Ms. San Schmatz and Professor Susan Hanekom. And then to acknowledge uh, the contribution of my colleagues at Aquanda Centre for Rural Health, Professor Ian Cooper, Ms. Joanna Muller and Dr. Francois Kutsia. For many of us at this conference who've been in rural communities for a lot, prolonged period, we'll be aware of the uh, sense of, of collaboration and uh, cooperation within rural communities. And it's been great on a personal level to find uh, that same spirit embodied within, uh, within the team um, that, that I've had the privilege to work with. I'd like to take a moment to position this presentation within the overarching conference theme, that of health equity. One of the biggest issues that rural healthcare faces is the maldistribution of the workforce. With healthcare workers disproportionately located in urban settings. Against the backdrop of severe health worker shortages nationally, this means that rural communities are underserved. When we consider the supply of rehabilitation professionals, it is clear that the situation is severe. Pictured in this slide is the density ratio of public sector physiotherapists matched to the uninsured population. It's important to note that of the rehabilitation professionals, physiotherapy is best represented and the situation is more severe within occupational therapy, speech therapy and audiology. The reasons for maldistribution of the workforce are vast and varied and it's important that any strategies that aim to address this maldistribution are comprehensive and are taken into account all of these varied factors. And indeed, educational strategies are just one strategy as part of a comprehensive strategy to address maldistribution of the workforce. One educational strategy that is described in the literature is rural clinical training or locating clinical education within rural communities at an undergraduate level. It seems that it has there are two mechanisms through which rural clinical training can influence uh, the rural workforce. Firstly, a capacity mechanism, that is that training within rural uh, environments as an undergraduate student uh, might influence the willingness of new graduates to practice in similar environments. And then there is a competence mechanism, that is training in rural communities as an undergraduate might help students develop the requisite skill set they need to practice within rural contexts. As such, rural clinical training is one of the recommendations proposed by the WHO to address the maldistribution of the workforce. For the last 10 years, Stellenbosch University has trained physiotherapy students within rural clinical environments. In 2011, students were placed within Vista, where they completed a short rotation with a focus on community-based rehabilitation. In 2015, our rural footprint expanded. We expanded clinical training within Vista to include two short rotations with different foci in the fields of pediatrics and neurology, and we expanded clinical training to Robertson Hospital with a focus on community-based rehabilitation. Thereafter, in 2017, clinical training commenced in Sierras, again with a focus on community-based rehabilitation as a short rotation. And finally, in 2019, we expanded clinical training to the Northern Cape, and students were sent to Uppington on a short specialist rotation named Physiotherapist in the District Health System. Considering the expansion of our clinical training over the preceding years, in 2019 we decided to formally review our clinical training efforts with a view to informing ongoing development of rural clinical training. Following a process of stakeholder engagement, which included health services staff and students alike, we completed the Succeed Simple Rules for Effective Decentralized Training rubric. 
As a tool, the rubric captures 41 simple rules for effective decentralized or distributed health professions training across six domains, namely building and maintaining relationships, moving towards a shared vision, fulfilling roles and responsibilities, balancing needs and providing support, engaging with learning, and evaluating and providing feedback. We used the feedback we'd received from varied stakeholders to rate our performance across these domains. The main findings of that review process are summarized in this slide. Most significantly, the length of exposure on these short rotations was found to be inadequate, leading to a lack of continuity in context. This potentially hampered the educational value of the experience and interrupted clinical service delivery. In addition, the rigidity of learning outcomes that accompany blocks with specific foci were often inappropriate for the ever-changing rural health landscape and limited the responsiveness of students to clinical learning activities. One example of this is a primary healthcare service point that was used as a neurological clinical site, despite the fact that patients at primary and primary care settings present with varied pathologies and pictures and complaints. It became clear to us that we needed to consider doing things differently. And so we embarked on a process of development. And by reviewing the literature on clinical training models, specifically considering clinical training models utilized in rural contexts. Specifically, we reviewed the literature on longitudinal integrated clerkships, an approach described widely in the medical literature and used within our faculty by our final year medical students which seemed to have intuitive appeal for our context. Following this, we engaged with communities of practice within our own division who represented the core foci of physiotherapy, namely community-based rehabilitation, neuromusculoskeletal physiotherapy, neurological rehabilitation, and medical and surgical rehabilitation. Thereafter, we engaged in a consultative process with clinicians which all culminated in the development and refinement of an adaptive clinical training model. On this slide, we present the adapted clinical training model by comparing it with the traditional clinical training model previously described. We lengthened our rotation from five weeks to 10 weeks to provide a more immersive experience within the rural context. We adapted the nature of our rotation, moving away from specific foci to an integrated approach to clinical training that is the curriculum becoming the patient that walks through the door, allowing responsiveness and flexibility to the ever-changing health services platform. In addition, we plan to provide students with simultaneous exposure across the health services platform, allowing students to participate comprehensively in patient care, providing care across the continuum of care and developing relationships with the patients that they treat. On this slide, you can picture what that simultaneous exposure across the health services platform could potentially look like using the example of one of the communities within VUSTA that our students train within, as well as Timber. During the course of their rotation, we had intended for students to train within a variety of sites uh, that service a specific community. Students would conduct home visits, support two community-based organizations, visit in Pelisweni Clinic, a primary care service point, as well as train within Bravalskloof Hospital, a specialized TB hospital that supports the community. This would allow students to interact with the community at different levels of care and would allow students to potentially partner with patients across their recovery journey through the continuum of care. We built in important enabling factors to ensure the success of this new clinical training model, one of which was multi-pronged support. Students would be supported in a number of ways, including both direct support and remote support. Direct support would be provided by clinicians who would direct, provide direct support within the clinical environment regarding patient assessment and management. Remote support would be provided by an allocated mentor as well as academic staff from the university. Mentors supported students' self-regulated learning, facilitated critical reflection and provided emotional support to students while on the platform. Academic staff were remotely available to students on the Vula mobile app, where students were able to refer case-based discussions via text to these staff members to receive input and ongoing management advice. 
This would ensure comprehensive support for students placed at rural sites. As mentioned, Vula Mobile ensured that remote case management discussions and case referral was an additional support structure available to students. However, Vula Mobile was used in another way, too, as an electronic logbook of sorts. Students were able to track their clinical exposures as they were now on an integrated rotation, and their clinical exposures were summarized and mapped against a pre-selected or predefined list of minimum clinical exposures that they needed, which had been developed by the communities of practice within the division and was aligned with the Health Professions Council of South Africa minimum standards for clinical training. This would allow for the generation of weekly summaries of clinical exposures, highlighting where students had gaps in their clinical training and uh, facilitating the self-regulated journey, learning journey for students moving forward. Having considered the development of this adapted clinical training model and the enabling factors that would support its implementation, it's now important for us to consider how the implementation process actually rolled out. We intended to roll out this clinical training model at our rural sites during 2020. And as with many things in 2020, COVID-19 to some extent disrupted those plans. In response to the challenges associated with COVID-19 and the challenges that that posed to ongoing clinical training, we adopted longitudinal integrated training as a model for all clinical training sites and not just our rural sites. The length of clinical rotations varied and clinical rotations were dependent on students' uh, clinical exposure. So students trained at clinical sites for either seven weeks, eight weeks or 15 weeks. In order to limit community transmission, simultaneous exposure across the health services platform was not always feasible and then actuality and opportunistic approach to clinical training was important. However, the flexibility in this clinical training model ensured that there was a positive clinical training experience despite the significant challenges that the pandemic posed to clinical training. And although it's a bit beyond the scope of this presentation, I'd like to present to you some of our unpublished data from the research that we did concerning this new approach to clinical training and the experience of students uh, on the clinical platform that I think speaks to the potential benefit for student learning and the potential benefit for the health services platform uh, through this new training model. Specifically, students commented on the continuity within the setting and how it is important for relationship building and for their own learning. So that's about 16 weeks of exposure in the same setting. I thought it was truly amazing in the way that you can get comfortable in a place or a placement and like also gain the trust of the clinicians so they trust you with difficult patients. So you really get to know the placement and the setup, and the more you get to know the setup, the more comfortable I became. It facilitates your learning much more, and then your supervisor as well. So there was time for relationship building. Students also commented on following their patients through the continuum of care and how that positively impacted their own development and contributed to their preparedness for future practice. I had quite a few patients that I saw from ICU moving over to general ward, moving over to becoming an outpatient. So that sort of rehab process really contributed to my learning. Because a lot of times as a student, I had the idea in my head that we treat now and we discharge. And then that's that. It doesn't really mean just inside the hospital walls, but holistic management in the future as well and where they go to. But I feel like I'm much more prepared going into ComServe with these integrated blocks than what I would have been without it. Perhaps most encouragingly, these findings speak to the transformation we endeavour to achieve with students in order to prepare them for future practice. And so, in conclusion, educational strategies are one component of a comprehensive strategy to address the maldistribution of healthcare workers. Intentionally reflecting on past experience can guide innovation and in so doing strengthen educational inter interventions. Critically reflective practice is important. A longitudinal integrated model appears to be a feasible and sensible approach to clinical training within a rural context and has the potential to benefit student learning and the health service, as demonstrated in the previous slide. In terms of future directions, we as a division hope to expand our rural footprint to accommodate a greater number of students at rural sites. Finally, we'd like to acknowledge the importance of ongoing investigation to the influence of rural clinical education on rural practice, and more specifically here, 
uh, acknowledge the work of Dr. Francois Kutsia and colleagues at Okwanda who are looking at longitudinal tracking study in this regard. Thank you.